So let me ask, have you ever been with a narcissistic person and gotten reactive to that narcissist? Have you ever been in a question of yourself as to whether or not you are the one creating the problem because you're the one who is aggressive or hostile or attacking toward that narcissistic person? Are you struggling and trying to maintain your own sanity but becoming extremely reactive to narcissism and to the narcissistic person in your life? Are you experiencing reactive abuse? That's what we're talking about today, reactive abuse and narcissism. So let's get started. So when this happens, when we get like really reactive to narcissists, when they are gaslighting us or they are projecting or, you know, doing all the horrible things that cause us frustration and cause us pain and cause us to feel like we're going crazy, right? When you're in reaction to it and you're in response to that attack on you with more attack back or with reactivity, it fuels the fire of what that narcissist is doing. And then it gets them to flip the script and make themselves the victim. It is a way a narcissist pushes you into a corner and then stands back and watches you fight your way out of that corner, pretending like they never pushed you in the corner in the first place. This is a really frustrating thing for a lot of people. And I, I talk to so many people who go through this because, well, first of all, I talk to very smart, very uh, um, strong people in life very often who don't like to put up with the type of gaslighting and manipulation that comes their way from narcissists. And so when they get reactive, they become the person that the narcissist not only blames, but then smears to everybody else. And oftentimes it can be proven because other people have seen it. So say a narcissist will be like all fully gaslighting you and treating you horrible for days and days. And then you go out in public and you're completely upset and angry and you're in reactivity and everyone in public sees you being upset with that narcissist. But what they see is the charming narcissist standing there totally innocent, like they did nothing to begin with. And you're just the crazy one. who struggle with reactivity. It is often the best tactic for them to really learn to gray rock, to really learn to gray rock if this is you, if this is really hard for you to maintain distance from what the narcissist is doing toward you and your own reactivity, because otherwise they will spin it and they will make it so you look like the one attacking them. And not only that, the worst part about it is they will get convince you that you are the one that's the problem. With enough pressure and enough years, months, whatever it is of continual gaslighting, of lack of accountability, of never showing empathy, of lack of consideration for you, you're going to lash out. It happens to a lot of people. I know personally that it, you know, at a certain point you can only take so much, right? And it is your self-defense. It is your self-worth trying to show itself. It is you saying I've had enough. But what we have to remember is when we're dealing with narcissists or toxic people anyway, they don't care. They don't care that it's enough. They don't care what they're doing. They don't care to take accountability and they don't care that you're getting reactive to them because it gives them an excuse to continue going with what they're doing since you're acting crazy anyway, according to them, right? They have zero interest in fixing things and they are using this to provoke further argument to continue to get your supply. Any attention is supply and a narcissistic person needs to live through all these drama episodes because it's where they get a juicy bit of supply. So if you've been pushed past your limits, if you've been devalued, if you had gaslighting, projecting, smearing, lying, cheating, have been yelled at, snapped at, passively aggressively talked to, ignored, silent treatment. If they rage, if they silent rage, if they even turn on you physically, it is completely understandable and you can see why a person can only take so much and you are bound to snap. If you are feeling you're at that threshold, it's time to back up because Going into a state of reactive abuse is not 
teaching the narcissist how to treat you, number one. It is not going to help your situation and it is not standing up for yourself really because the truth is what we need to do is get away from these people, not try and communicate and live with them, right? This is, we're talking about highly toxic people here who are taking you, who is a safe and sane and healthy human being otherwise, right? And twisting you up so much that you get into a state of reactivity, which would be natural for anyone who needs to defend themselves. So getting away from it, disengaging from it really is the answer. It, we're not doing reactivity to punish the other person. Okay, let's stop that because that's pointless. You can't punish them. They don't, they don't care. They just move on and talk about how, how horrible you are, which doesn't serve anybody, right? So the disengaging, the stepping away, the getting your life safe, that's what we're interested in here, I think. So obviously leaving and going no contact is the best thing you can do. If you can't do that, like say you are parallel parenting or you own a business or whatever it is where you have to maintain, you have a parent that you're not willing to go no contact with, disengage from their toxicity. It is not about you. It was never about you. And I will say this over and over and over. Toxic is toxic. Toxic will create more toxic. And you cannot have a healthy relationship with a toxic person. It is impossible because they are throwing toxicity into every relationship that they have. It's impossible to take that out. It's like poison. Okay. So disengage from anything that feels toxic to you create some pretty hard boundaries and do not let that person cross they're going to cross it you don't you don't engage with it when they cross it so say you're parallel parenting and they say boo hoo i'm so sad you're you're a terrible mother or father because you you're keeping the children from me blah 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 when you know for a fact you're not doing that what you're doing is saying you know take the time that's yours but I'm not offering you extra, <laughs> right? You're, you're not doing anything to help them facilitate their life, which they in turn see as you not doing it for them, right? And they get mad. You just ignore that, okay? Don't let their emotional pulls, emotional manipulations pull you in any direction, right? So disengage from that only answer the need to know information if they say blah 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 you're keeping me away la 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 and then they say oh, I'm, i plan to be there at seven o'clock you say okay see you at seven and you'd ignore the rest of it completely gray rock these toxic people if they are pushing you to the point of reactivity it is not good for you to be in a state of reactivity and you are what matters here okay we can't punish them it doesn't work we need to step away so that we save our own sanity and our own lives so that we can create something better. You guys, it's too fast of a life to go around hanging on to these toxic people thinking we can make change in their, in their reality. We can't. Understand that if you have been reactive, if you have been reactive and you're upset with yourself, if you have been reactive, if you're proud of yourself for it, cool, whatever. If it worked for you and now you're out of it and you're, and you're feeling good, that's fantastic. If you, a lot of people though, talk to me and say they feel like they were the problem. They feel like they were the toxic person. They feel like they can now trust themselves to be healthy in a relationship because look how far they pushed things. Okay. If that's you, give yourself some space. Okay. Give yourself some credit for what you've lived through. Understand what you've lived through and understand that you were under extreme situation that in extreme circumstances that created a side of you that was a little defensive, right? And that it's it's nothing to beat yourself up for. It's just something to learn to now manage that you can't get reactive to everybody. Otherwise, we're just living in a state of reactivity and that's not healthy for us. So if that's you, then I would reach out for some help on how to, how to settle this down, how to calm down the reactivity and how to not feel like everything is attacking me. It's part of CPTSD. It's totally understandable with what you've lived through and it's not a place you have to stick. It's one thing to state a boundary and be assertive and it's another thing to be reactive and lash back out. So just know that if you've been reactive, if you are experiencing being reactive right now in, to a narcissist in your life, no one's judging you here, okay? We know how hard it is. I know how hard it is. This community understands. 
and we're here to help. So if you need to talk to someone, make sure you check out the information in the description of videos. There's access to community of peer support. There's access to group coaching and there's access to coaching. So if you need it, please check it out. Please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel and I will be back with more next time.